Hey everybody, this is AP Macro. We're doing a review of major graphs, and we are going to talk about the Phillips curve in this video. We'll try to sum up all the major aspects of the Phillips curve in a single video. Okay, here's the deal. What is this curve all about? It's about showing the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Guys, I like to say macroeconomists are obsessed about three things. What are those three things? Real GDP, the unemployment rate, and the inflation rate. And this graph is all about two of them, the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. And what we want to know is what is that relationship? To answer that question, I'm going to go to the ASNT model. I want to say right here at the beginning, guys, that we really want to link our knowledge about this graph with our knowledge about this graph. I think that's super important for all macroeconomic students. So here's my question I've got for you. In the short run, what is more unstable, the SRAS curve or the AD curve, i.e. the short run total production curve or our total spending curve? And what is more unstable is total spending. Okay? AD shifts more than SRAS. Yes, this curve can shift, but this is far more unstable. So let me show you that, guys. Let's say that this is E sub zero, and let's have a positive aggregate command shock. So AD shifts off to the right, and we'll say AD1. Okay, actually, just get off that prime right there, which is AD1 taking us to E sub one. Well, what's going to happen in this case? Well, the price level is going to go up. Real GDP is going to increase. When real GDP increases, guys, the only way we're going to produce more stuff is hire more workers, so the unemployment rate is going to go down. So, price level goes up, we associate with an inflation rate going up, and the unemployment rate is going to go down. We're getting our answer, guys. There's an inverse relationship. That sounds very much like an inverse relationship. One goes up, the other goes down. Again, AD, it can also have a negative demand shock, right? AD can shift off to the left. So, AD shifts off to the left. Now, I'm going to put that prime in right there. E sub 1 prime. We go over here, we've got the price level going down. We associate that with an inflation rate coming down, right? So price level going down. And again, I'm going from here to there, real GDP is decreasing. Guys, that means we're going to be laying some workers off. That means the unemployment rate's going to go up. Again, inflation rate going down, unemployment rate going up, inverse relationship. So in the short run, there is very much an inverse relationship between these two. So let's go ahead and Put that on our board. Downward sloping line representing inverse relationship. That is our short run PC. That is, of course, not the end of the story, right? There's another curve we can put on here. What is that other curve? It is the long run aggregate supply curve. And where are we going to put that long run aggregate supply curve? Well, at full employment output, right? So let's go ahead and get that curve on here. Again, I'm trying to really emphasize linking up our knowledge of this graph with that one. So here is my LRAS curve. It is anchored on the horizontal axis at full employment output. F for full employment, Y for output, full employment output. Well, what does this say? It's saying that if we ever let the long run happen, guys, we will end up at full employment. Well, what can I associate full employment with when it comes to the unemployment rate? the natural rate of unemployment, right? When we're at full employment, we have structurally unemployed people, we have frictionally unemployed people, but we have no cyclically unemployed people. That's what the natural rate of unemployment is. So guys, since we end up here in the long run, I'm going to go over here and put N R U. And I'm going to put a vertical line right there. Again, vertical, Y vertical, to say that this is where we're going to be always in the long run, and I'm going to put my LRPC, that's the long run Phillips curve, saying there is no relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in the long run. Let me say that again. You see a vertical line, what that means is the inflation rate go up and down, up and down, up and down, and in the long run, there's no relationship on the unemployment rate. So there we go. That's the basis of the model. Let's get to manipulating it a little bit, okay? Let's go back to that E sub zero. At E sub zero, you see I'm at full employment output. Guys, that means that I'm at the natural rate of unemployment, and like I'm always on the SRAS curve, right? I'm always on the SRAS curve. I am always on the SRPC curve, or our economy is always on it. I'm not actually always on it. But anyhow, there we go. Put that dot. So we'll say A corresponds to E sub zero. Now let's go back to that positive demand shift. Again, what happened? Price level went up, real GDP increased, unemployment rate went down, right? So we got this inflationary pressure, and by the way, we're heading into an inflationary gap, right? 
and the unemployment rate's going down. So how would I do that? I need to go this direction, right? Unemployment rate's going down. I need to show inflation. Well, I can do that by staying on the SRPC curve. We're just going to move along the SRPC curve. I'm going to put my dot B, okay, which is corresponding to my E sub 1, which gives us a big takeaway, guys. This right-hand side of the ASAD model, that is our inflationary gap side. On the Phillips curve, curve, Phillips curve model, the left side of LRPC is our inflationary gap side, right? So that's a very important takeaway. Booming, booming. E sub 1 corresponding with B right there. Let's talk about the negative uh, aggregate demand shock, right? AD shifting to the left. Price level going down. Think of it as an inflation rate coming down. Again, let me say, guys, price level and inflation rate, they're not the same thing, but we want to think of them as positively correlated, right? If one goes up, we're thinking the other one's going up, the other one down, the other one goes down. Okay, it's not quite that simple, but for the most part, they're definitely not going in opposite directions, right? So we go from E sub 0 to E sub 1, saying downward pressure on the price level, I can associate with the inflation rate coming down, and real GDP decreasing, that's the unemployment rate going up. So inflation rate going down, unemployment rate going up, that's again a movement along my B sub prime, my B prime right there. A movement along the SRPC, which gets another huge takeaway. Guys, when AD shifts, we move along the SRPC. That is super important. AD shifting, we move along the SRPC curve. Now, what could happen when we get to E sub 1? That inflationary gap, which again is that B right there. Well, we could use monetary and fiscal policy to pull AD back. And if we did, we would just move back to point A. Or we could just leave the economy alone. If we just left the economy alone, what would happen? Eventually, wages would go up, right? Remember, that's an inflationary gap. So in the long run, if we leave things alone, we're going to get more inflation, right? Wages go up. That's a cost of production going up. SRAS is going to shift to the left. So let me show that SRAS shifting to the left. So SRAS going like that. Price level going up, real GDP declining, meaning that when real GDP declines, unemployment's going to go up. So we get both inflation and unemployment going up. So I need to show from that point B, inflation and unemployment rate both increasing. Now, technically speaking, again, getting back to that, these aren't the exact same thing. You're technically allowed to put your point C right there along with your point B. You don't have to actually show the inflation rate actually going up anymore, but it's perfectly fine to put that dot right there. You just need to satisfy those two arrows I just put. You need the unemployment rate to increase and the inflation rate either to stay the same or go up. So I go a little bit the safer route. I like to put my dot right there, put my C, S, R, P, C, now sub one, sub zero, big takeaway. SRAS shifted, I shifted my SRPC. Which way did the SRAS shift? It shifted left. Which way am I shifting my SRPC? I'm shifting it right. Again, let's go back to this dot, right? That was the recessionary gap, right? This side is the recessionary gap, which means the right-hand side of the LRPC is the recessionary gap, okay? When I'm here, I associate that with that B prime, right? E1 prime, I'm associating with B prime. Now, what could we do? We could use government or the Fed to do expansionary monetary fiscal policy, shifting the AD back. And if that was the case, we just move back along the SRPs back to A. Because when AD shifts, we move along the SRPC. Or we could wait for the long run. We got cyclical unemployment. Eventually, wages are going to come down. That's a cost of production going down. And what would eventually happen? Remember, I'm looking at that dot. If we waited for the long run, that SRAS would shift, right? The SRAS would shift to the right with my SRAS. So I go from E1 prime to E2 prime. Well, see the price level going down more, associated with the inflation rate coming down. And then we see the real GDP increasing, which is associated with the unemployment rate coming down. So I need both inflation rate down, unemployment rate down. Guys, can I go down and to the left and stay on this curve? Heck no, I'm going to shift the curve. Again, you can point your, put your C prime at the same level as B prime, okay? But it's also perfectly fine to put your C a little bit lower than that, like I like to do. C prime, S, R, P, C, 1 prime, okay? Again, what's the big takeaway? 
SRAS shifted to the right, SRPC shifted to the left. Those are the major things we want to know. I'm going to tackle one little, one thing more with this model, okay? It has to do with this concept of actual inflation rate and the expected inflation rate. So, I'm going to do a little scenario to get some understanding around that as we finish up the build curve. Let's say we're at point A, and now I'm going to actually put some values, okay? So let's say at point A, the inflation rate is 5%, and the natural rate of unemployment is 5%. Our central bank might not like that. They might not like the inflation rate of 5%. They might say, that's too high. We like to target an inflation rate of 2%. And so our central bank, even though we're at our natural rate of unemployment, might say, you know what, I'm going to intervene. I'm going to try to get disinflation. I'm going to try to get the inflation rate to come down. So what would they do? They would do contractionary or tight monetary policy. What would that do? That would shift our AD curve off to the left, right? When the AD goes left, we move along our SRPC, so we would go to that B up to the right. Along the SRPC to the right, we go to that B prime, okay? So the Fed, that's right, they would put us into a recession because they're trying to get disinflation. Now here's the key, guys. When you are at this B right there, when you're at that B, all right, draw that over to here. I'm going to put, say, 2% right there. You might be thinking, well, that can't be zero, and that's fine, guys. Just to let you all know, this might be 0%. We can have negatives on this graph, no problem. But anyhow, so we're at B, so our actual inflation rate is now 2%. They brought down the inflation rate, but here's what we would say. While we're at B, our expected inflation rate is still 5%. We're not convinced the Fed is actually going to follow this thing through. We don't know if they're really going to hold us in this recession. We think they might lose their nerve and say, no, 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 let's increase the money supply, let's get us out and bring us right back to A. We've got to wait until we actually, our expectations about inflation come down, okay? So let's say, though, that the Fed puts us over at B and holds us at B. And if they do, eventually, at some point, it's going to be painful, guys, and guys, disinflation is a painful experience. If they do this, guys, then the expected inflation rate will also come down to 2%. And when our expected inflation rate comes down to 2% with our actual, then we're going to shift our SRPC. And this time, I'm going to be a little bit more technical, which you'll see on a lot of the graphs in your textbooks. Remember, what's happening at this point is that expected inflation rate is coming down to the actual. It's coming down to 2%. And so what we do is we take this SRPC curve, and we would just shift it. We make a little horizontal movement from B to C prime right there, and now that is our new SRPC curve, okay? This SRPC curve is showing our unemployment rate at our new expected inflation rate of 2%, okay? And once we got back on C, we would both, our actual inflation rate and our expected inflation rate would be the same. If you missed that, guys, right here, your actual inflation rate is right there, but when you're right there, your expected inflation rate is still back on the LRPC. Now, once the expected inflation rate comes down, then we're going to shift that SRPC down right there so that the new intersection is right there at 2%, and now your actual and your expected are the same. So, again, if you are not on your LRPC, your actual inflation rate, you are corresponding to the SRPC, where you're at on your SRPC, but your expected inflation rate, you should still go back to where your SRPC intersects your LRPC to find your expected. But if you are on your LRPC, and you're always on your SRPC, the actual and the expected inflation rate are the same. I know that last little part was a little bit difficult. That's why I put it at the end. Anyhow, hope it made some sense to you. That's the Phillips curve in a single take. See you in the next video.